Coffee Talk. We're going to continue, of course, with this beautiful, wonderful newspaper about how military personnel stationed along the East Coast to prevent immigrants flooding in from the Atlantic. If only that didn't sound so familiar to real life. Werewolf representatives push the ministry for more accessible sedative, and doctor from Salach Town arrested for experimenting with child cloning. Hmm. Alright. Are you sure that would be okay? Yes! I mean, it would be really hard to pull off. But it's something that'll make the story different. Different isn't always good. It's a neat concept. Can we change the music? This is extra. There we go. It's a neat concept, but you need to handle it carefully and gracefully. I know. Who did? Oh, Gala. Hey, Gala. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Gala. Am I interrupting? It looks like you were having an intense discussion. It's nothing. Yabby was just giving me feedback. It's for the book I'm writing. Sounds like a heavy discussion. What are you up to tonight? I'm just planning to sit and relax. Please don't let my presence interrupt you. Oh, don't worry about it. Although, I need to interrupt Yabby for a moment. Sure, how can I help you? Can I have a cup of... Hmm... You remember my remedy? Of course. Do you want me to give it a try again? My last order didn't quite hit the spot. Remember, it's tea and ginger. The last thing is definitely a different ingredient from either of those. Okay. Remember, it has tea and ginger. Okay. Tea. Ginger. Milk. We can try that. I don't think I've tried milk yet. Oh, no, wait. I think I made this by accident before, and he didn't like it. Tea, milk, and ginger? Because that's like, you have to do it a certain order to get it the right way. What the? It's called Galahad? That's gotta be it. And look, it even has like a little wolf on it. Serve it. Judging from the smell, this looks like it. Indeed. I have the same feeling. I've made a note of that mixture. Perfect. <laughs> I thought there would be a bigger reaction than indeed. Anyway, please don't mind me and continue with your discussion. Don't worry, Mr. Gala. We're done for tonight. For the night. You're done. I have a lot of new homework thanks to you. You're welcome. Is Hyde coming? No, I'm by myself tonight. It's gonna be a peaceful night then. That's mean, Freya. Oh, come on, I was just joking. He needs to learn how to communicate his thoughts nicely, though. He might not look like it, but he's a very kind person, you know. He doesn't show it, that's for sure. Th that applies to you as well. Oh, come on. Who did? <gasps> Baileys! Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Baileys. Heya. How are you doing, Freya? Not good. What's going on? Yabby was just criticizing my story. It's called feedback. It's cruel. It's necessary. Sounds interesting. What's the problem with the story? The story is non-linear. And quite complicated. Imagine a choose-your-own-adventure storybook, but for adults. Sounds pretty common so far, but instead of telling you which page to turn to, each decision you make will give you a score. What? The score will determine which page you should go to. That sounds more like a video game than a book. I know, it's not that original. But my target here is the mainstream audience. Huh? With the help of my publisher, this kind of book may go mainstream. Just like that Choose Your Own Adventure show on Netstream. It was nothing new, but because of the marketing, and the names involved, it reached the mainstream market. 
sounds interesting. Well, she's she knows what she's trying to do. Good job, Freya. Go get it, girl. And highly ambitious, Freya. At least it's simpler than my other idea. Which is... Making the novel not in the form of a book, but in the form of story cards. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, right? As if she has all the time in the world. And that's before even considering the sensitive issue. Of setting the story in a world where only humans exist. What did you say? No, there's a reason why it has to be that way. Just wait until I finished it, okay? Alright, alright. As Yabby said, though, I won't have the time. Getting a normal pitch approved is already a steep climb. Let's not make the mountain even higher. Fair enough. What's the story all about, by the way? You'll have to wait for it. Don't want to spoil the fun. If you say so. Anyway, I haven't ordered anything. What do you want to drink tonight? Ginger latte, if you know how to make it. Um... Coffee, milk, and ginger? I think? No, that's milk, ginger, coffee. Trash that. Milk... Wait. Milk, milk, ginger. Coffee ginger milk. There it is. How come with the the, the, the the milk tea thing I could put latte art on it but not on an actual latte? Here you go. Thanks. Damn, this is good. <laughs> with this kind of drink making skill, I wonder why your place isn't any bigger. What we have here now is more than enough for me. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess. By the way, how are you doing, Baileys? Still busy with your last client? Oh, I'm done with her. Done? As in you're dropping the project? Hey, I'm not crazy. I still need the money. Done as in I finished the job. I spent the past few days making sure. It's even done before the deadline. Did she like it? Oh, she loved it. She had some complaints, of course. But I convinced her. By using some design terms she doesn't understand. <laughs> well, all Baileys. Man after my own heart. So, you finished your job by bullshitting her. Ha ha ha. The finest bullshit, my lady. The w that's one survivor skill every freelancer must have. Are you working on anything right now? No. I'm taking a break from work. I need to work on a few personal matters. Oh. Like you and Lua? Something like that. By the way, I'm curious. How did you guys meet? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind. It's just that I was young and stupid, you know? Oh, come on. Who hasn't been there? You're right. So, it was a bit of I was a bit of a player back in college. Ooh, spicy. And I was going after my then best friend's girlfriend's friend. Well, that's a mouthful. Try saying that five times fast. Wait, what? Okay, I'll say it slowly. I used to have a best friend. He was an incubus. Okay. Let's call him Cognac. Cognac has a girlfriend. Still following. And that girl has a friend. That friend is the one I'm after. Ooh, okay. Got it. She was one of the hottest girls there. But everyone knew she wasn't the type of girl you'd want to date. Why? It's... I don't want to get into details. But this succubus was super hot, and all the guys wanted to sleep with her. She was a player, too. Huh? That doesn't sound like Lua at all. Because it wasn't Lua, genius. Oh, Freya. Huh? Lua was my friend's girl. Holy moly! This is getting spicier. 
The other girl's name was... Let's just call her Rose. Continue. I knew Lua thanks to her relationship with Cognac. That's a fake name you made up, right? Yes! Now, will you let me continue without interruptions? Okay, okay. So, I asked Lua a lot of things about Rose. She knew what I was after. It annoyed her so much. But I kept on bothering her. I mean, I was a pretty... active guy back then. So, Lua came over to visit us at one point. I lived with Cognac back in college. I'd been out and I got back just as Lua arrived. A total coincidence. We went into our place together and witnessed something surprising. What? Cognac was sleeping with Rose. No, Cognac! Holy mother of Molly! I saw the look on Lua's face. The disbelief, anger, sadness. Without even thinking about it, I punched Cognac in the face. You what? I got into a fight with him. Oh, I haven't told you. Cognac was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu jiu tutor for kids. He's pretty good. Oh my. Bailey's. <laughs> yeah, I landed that one punch. And he beat me to a pulp. <laughs> Easily. Oh, poor Bailey's. <laughs> Lua begged me to stop fighting on her behalf. <laughs> More like she begged Cognac. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I lost, but I don't give up so easily. I was beaten pretty bad. So Lua took care of my injuries. We grew closer after that. And I don't even remember the exact date. But suddenly, that friendship turned into a relationship. That was one hell of a story. I know. <sighs> Have you seen her by any chance? Yeah. Lua came by a few days ago. How is she doing? She hasn't returned any of my calls or texts. Well... She's healthy, that's for sure. She got into an argument, though. With whom? There was this male model. A model? I didn't think she was the type of girl. To go out with a model? No, Bailey's... <laughs> oh, they weren't together. What were they arguing about? Well, we were talking about your relationship. Lua told us about the reason behind the fight. About your family stuff. And then this guy, Hyde, joined the discussion. Oh, Gal is looking over. <laughs> what did he say? He didn't understand why Lua would insist on getting family approval. Considering, you know, what? You're willing to leave your own family. You would do that for her? Yes, I would. I'm sick and tired of my family. Why would you say that? Let me tell you about my family. Or, I should say, most elven families. They all think they're so high and mighty. If you're born an elf, there are certain unwritten rules you must follow. Reputation and appearance are everything. We must never, ever make our family look bad. You can only befriend certain people. You must dress a certain way. You can only have certain jobs. Jobs that are deemed worthy and successful. Like being a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO. You know. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be an artist. I love drawing and creating art. However, becoming an artist is not something elves would deem suitable. Unless you become the next Da Vinci. So, when I switched from a business major to an art major, my parents went crazy, screamed like they were on fire. They told me that I'd never be rich or successful. All that because you chose an art degree? You want to know the worst part? They blamed Lua. What do you mean? They blamed her for my decision to pursue my passion for art. Yelled about how her kind is ruining the country. Accusing their religion of worshipping the Dark Lord. Voldemort! Accusing her of putting a spell on me and cursing the family. Whoa. I mean, come on, this is the 21st century. That is so not cool. I don't want to sound judgmental, but your family is racist. Tell me about it. Lua is the only person that can make me feel alive. She showed me how I can be free and pursue my dreams. <sighs> I don't understand why Lua is so obsessed with the idea of reconciliation with my family. I just don't get it. 
have no problem with leaving my family, you know. I would happily leave them for the both of us. What about her? Oh, Gala. He's gonna be the Hyde. He's gonna be like Hyde was for Lua, but for Bailey's. What about her and her family? You may be happy to leave your family. However, it may not be the same for her. I... Gala, do you have something to say? Perhaps you could give us a different perspective. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I couldn't help overhearing your story. I assume that the person you're talking about is not an elf, correct? Yes, she's a succubus. I see. I'm a werewolf. For werewolves, the wolf pack is the most important thing. We'll put family before any other. We often have our own problems within the pack, but we won't abandon our family for anything. Perhaps that's also true for her and her family. Besides, if you leave your family for her, wouldn't that make your parents believe that all those bad stereotypes about Succubi are true? Ooh, he makes a good point. I... I never thought of it that way before. Whether you like it or not, your actions will have an impact on her as well. And if you leave your family for her, that will put her in a difficult spot. She might feel responsible for your actions. There's nothing to feel bad about. I'm leaving my messy family to create a better one with her. It's easy for you to say that now, but you don't know what the future holds. One day, circumstances might change. One day, one of you might regret your decisions. One day, you might use the I left my family for you card. Ooh, yikes, don't want to trap her. We love each other. I'll be with her whatever the circumstances may be. You know, love is like a flame. It might burn fiercely at first. Love is a burning thing. Sorry. But over time it will die down if you don't maintain it. Maintaining it won't be easy. It will be hard work. Because life... Life is full of storms. And marriage, it will not survive on love alone. Whoa, that's deep. <laughs> Freya's gotta get her two cents in. We'll have each other, and that's enough for us. Tell me, do you have health insurance? What? I'm an elf, why would I need health insurance? You'll need some. What for? Immortality is an elven privilege, but you'll lose it if your family disowns you. I've seen people go bankrupt because they fell ill or got seriously injured. Emptied their entire life savings for an $8 pill because in this country they charge $20,000 for it. Ooh, that hits hard. <laughs> and if you decide to have children, they won't have the same privilege as you do. There's a high probability that they'll get bullied for being a half-breed. There are consequences. It shouldn't be taken lightly. Think about it. Anyway, I've gotta go. I apologize for my intrusion. No, thank you for your insight. I've gotta go, too. Wanna head out together? Sure. Thanks for the drink, Yabby. And Freya? Bye. Damn. Gal is spitting some straight facts at poor Bailey's. I mean, if you're an elf, and you know, you've had immortality your whole life, the, you know, thinking, it, you might take it for granted, you don't realize what you, it's like a privilege, you know? Like white privilege, you don't, you have it, even if you don't think about it. And he didn't really think about it until the consequences came up. What? You made me lose two customers in a minute. Hey, that wasn't on me. They were leaving anyway. Are you going to write that in your book? It's a secret. If your book is based on this coffee shop, how can you present a story like theirs in a world with only humans around? I'm not sure. Perhaps a hot drink will give you some inspiration. Sounds like a great idea. Milky Way, sweet and cool, like outer space. Ooh, maybe if that alien guy comes back I can try and make that. But that looks like caramel, so I don't know if I'd be able to make that. Well, um, anyway. Anyway, 
thank you guys for watching. I really hope that Bailey's and Lua can find a way to maybe mend things with their families. Bailey's more than Lua. Lua's family just wants to make sure she's not going to get hurt. But I, I really hope that they can stay together. They seem like a good couple if it weren't for the way their families treat Lua. Or, or his family treats Lua. But uh, I hope with Gala and Hyde's advice, as, as pushy as Hyde was, that it'll help them figure out how to reconcile their relationship and find a way to move forward. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Remember to take care of yourselves and good night.